welcome to episode 24 of Knitting on the Farm podcast. My name is Angela and I'm coming to you from County Down in Northern Ireland. This is my little channel where I chat to you about my crafting life and life that happens on the farm and just general uh, family life that I feel like sharing with you. So welcome very much and thank you so much for joining me. I noticed just before I started to record that I have over 1000 subscribers now so that is fantastic and since I have been absent for recording for so long um, it's even more exciting so thank you so so much for all the folk that are subscribed and stick with the channel and if you're watching and you haven't subscribed do hit that little button hit the like button and uh, it's really nice and encouraging just to see that. So today is Friday the 1st of October. It is um, really cold here today and um, we've noticed a big change in the weather this week um, especially in the morning times and um, it's definitely getting more like autumn which is really nice. I do like the autumn period. Um, it's been quite a while from I've done a proper podcast um, you'll notice that I did put up a little um, video of photographs just of our summer here on the farm and the, some of the things that we got up to since lockdown has eased a little and it was really special to be able to do those things. I don't think you miss them until you realise that you can't do them so I enjoyed very much the time that we were able to spend with the family and get out and about and do a few more little things that are more like normal. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that I have a new little puppy called Gizmo and I can't let him into the craft room here at all. I was ready to record about an hour ago and have already moved all the yarn up high, uh, but he has a great jump and he got a skein of yarn. So I had to salvage it before I could even start to record. So Gizmo's down for his nap. And I have about 45 minutes and we'll see how much um, I can get through in that period before he starts. But Let's get started then. Um, all the information of where you can find me um, has been on the slides before. And I'm just going to leave it that way and put the details down below because it um, cuts, saves time and saves you having to listen to me ramble over the same things uh, time after time. Ravelry chat then. Um, you will have noticed that um, obviously with being absent from recording um, the quarter in September, April, May, no June, July, sorry, July um, wasn't uh, announced but I have contacted the people privately through message and everybody has received their prizes and just to put it on record um, for gifting through the year, the quarterly winner was um, number 111 which is Holly at home Kabul um, Missouri and she had knit the Musselboro hat and it was a lovely hat I have won and these mornings out walking it definitely is a warm hat. The um, spring fun mal winner then that was I think it was running up to June I can't even remember it's been so long and um, there were 17 entries and it was actually number 17 that won that prize and that was Heather who is Lace Wing on Heather from Maine and she had knit the Magnolia sweater and it was that mal was all about learning something new and she had a new to her bind off technique and it was giving her a full eye cord look on the edges of her sweater. So congratulations to the two winners. Um, they have been gifted patterns and uh, the gifting through the year, then the quarterly winner, it'll soon be time to draw that, draw that again. So I'm looking forward to that. Keep your entries coming in. Um, I'm very absent on, on Ravelry. I haven't even, my project page is up to date. Um, and I'm not even going to start and try and sort of get that all up to date I'm just going to start from here and see how it goes because if I spend all my time doing that I just won't get um I won't get moving forward so apologies for that just when I am um chatting about Ravelry 
Um, I am the only administrator on Ravelry and it would be brilliant if someone that um, posts quite often um, is familiar with uh, Ravelry and um, would like to help out on the uh, podcast group over there. That would be brilliant. Um, it would just mean for me personally, I would know that people were being kept in touch with and there wouldn't be long absences and it would really just keep keep the community spread going better and um, more than what I'm actually able to do at the moment. Um, so if you're interested um, in maybe helping me out, um, bringing new ideas, maybe bringing new threads, um, just sort of replying to posts and generally keeping the podcast group alive over there and chatty, I would appreciate if you wanted to get in contact with me, that would be brilliant. Um, so send me a direct message on Instagram or on Ravelry or send me a direct email on uh, knittingonthefarm at gmail.com and we can have a chat about that. Um, I would appreciate it very much, as I've said several times. I think that's all the Ravelry uh, chat. Um, if there's anything else, I'll put it in the show notes then down below. So let's move on then to finished objects. Sorry, I'm just flicking through my notes here. So I do have a few finished things. It's really only in the last week I've sort of got my knitting mojo back. Um, I was doing bits and pieces, but I haven't really been enjoying them. But I must admit, last week and this week, I'm enjoying my knitting again. And I've got some things finished and I'll share them with you. So I can't remember, as I say, whether these started or not during the last podcast. But these are socks that I um, have knit again for Andrew. I've learned a lot about my sock knitting. I'm looking at the socks I knit from him, for him in the beginning. I've realised that I most certainly wasn't knitting them long enough. And I wasn't knitting them um, long enough in the foot either. Long enough leg or long enough foot. So um, some of those are needing to be replaced really. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. Okay, so the socks then that I have finished first up um, are, it's not all socks, but these are a pair and these are for Andre. They are the After Party Socks by Becky Norms. I should have had them on a sock blocker. I think you can see. Um, this pattern was designed, I think, maybe for self-striping more so than the yarn I have used, but um, it has worked very well. I would find it something similar to the heel toe do -si do pattern from the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, it's a lovely pattern. Um, it was quite uh, size restrictive, I think. Um, so... I added a couple of stitches on and um, converted it up to a 68 stitch um, pattern. I think it was maybe 64. And I just added a couple of stitches on um, on each side. And I've noticed with the socks that um, although a 64 stitch sock fits on the leg and the foot, um, I have found that a 36 row uh, heel flap fits much better. Um, so I did the 36 rows on the heel and um, I just did the normal heel flap and heel flap and gusset and then on the toe I did a little bit of striping there if you can see um, just for just for a bit of interest and um, the yarn then that I used I do have two just to prove. I'm not sure if you can pick up on camera, but it's very obvious, very, very obvious in real life that one is much darker than the other. Yeah, I think you can pick it up there. Um, the yarn I used was for the main colour is um, Suburba Vintage, which is a Rico yarn. It is 75% vintage wool and 25% polyamide. And the colour was 005. 
um, yeah, I was quite quite surprised um because normally sort of commercial yarn you don't notice an awful difference. Um, I was talking to one of my friends and she said maybe because sometimes yarns are designed more for shawls than socks. Um, but I don't I don't know. It's four ply. It was four hundred and twenty meters to hundred grams. Um, it was nice enough to knit with a wee bit. Um, you most certainly wouldn't use higher higher sharps for it, um, because it would split. Um, but it feels nice and nice and warm. It's softened down well with, uh, washing, and we'll see how they, see how they wear. That is what I have left, out of a hundred grams. Um, I won't have enough to do another pair of farmer socks, but um, I'll have enough with the contrast to be able to do um, a pair of shorter socks because I have that left as well. So that is the um, After Party Socks by Becky Norms. Okay, what's next then? Um, you will have remembered um, a little while ago I knit the, the wintergreen sweater for our grandson James. Um, it was the green striped sweater with the, the bottom um, was green and then it had the stripes of green and cream across the front. So um, I wanted to knit a hat to, uh, to match it or to go along with it and James said yes he would like a hat. Um, so I was restricted to how much green I had. I had plenty of the acre colour. Um, so I find this hat. It is the Salome, ha Salome hat, I presume, because it's a ski hat. Um, it's by the Swan Island Yarn Company. And it's not, it's a boxy hat, maybe more so than a beanie. You can see the. I knit it up in a day, it wasn't hard to knit. Now, it should have a further, if you can see here, it should have another repeat of that up here, just before the crown decreases. But it needs a pom-pom. Um, I'm just gonna make a traditional fluffy pom-pom. So I wanted to have enough green left to do that. Um, so that's why I left it out. The yarn is Debbie Bliss Cash Merino. It's the 55% wool, 33 acrylic, acrylic and 12% cashmere. And the colours are acre and olive. So it's not blocked yet. Um, I need to get some balloons and uh, get the pom-pom onto the top of it. I did put a wee handmade tab on it and as everybody shows I might as well do the same that's the floats on the inside I have the ends woven in and I always leave it a wee bit longer to block it and then I nip it off and I have left this string for it to um, attach um, a button and attach the pom-pom on the outside so that it can come off for washing so that's the sal slalom hat by uh, Swan Island Company. It's a paid for pattern and I purchased it off Ravelry. I still have um, one of the Ecru colour and these wee bits left so um, I'll have enough to put make plenty. There'll be plenty of cream in the pom-pom on the top and maybe not so much not so much green but we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're getting on not too bad and um, I hope you're listening, haven't fell asleep yet and um, are enjoying our wee chat. Okay then, I have another finished object and um, you can see it here. Da -da. This is the Close To You shawl um, by Justina Laroska. Or I'll leave it at that, I'm not even going to try and say it again. Um, you can uh, look it up. I'll put a, f a photograph in up in the the corner here, hopefully if I remember. 
and um, you can see the pattern. So if you remember a few months ago, I won a giveaway that had been uh, organized by Inspired Fiber Works. And I got a beautiful um, full skein plus um, five 20 gram minis. There's four of them here. I'll show you where the other one is um, to match. And it came all the way across the pond, um, which was so, so kind of her. And I couldn't decide just what I wanted to make. The yarn is a mixture of 60% superwash merino. It's 20% yak and 20% silk. And I have never knit with yak before. And oh boy, it is absolutely a dream. The merino yak silk combination was beautiful to knit with. Absolutely beautiful. This shawl, as I say, it's a one skein. Um, I added a few extra rows on. Um, it's an eight row pattern repeat, a paid for pattern. Um, I added a few rows on um, just because I wanted to use every last pen penny every last inch of the the colour jar. I knew I had the minis so um I didn't have any worry about not having enough for to do the cast off and if you can see maybe I'll bring it over and you'll see but I did the cast off the pico bind off in one of the one of the minis and it only took a few grams. I still have that much left. They're, up, they're stunning, stunning colours and I thought for autumn, I mean, it couldn't be any better. That's the right side. I still have a, a bulb pin in to make sure you, I get the right side. So it's simple garter stitch. If you can see the, the bind off there, the pico edge. I'm really pleased with it. In the green, um, I thought it turned out turned out quite well. Um, so it, the majority, it's all garter stitch. The uh, edging is knit as you go along. Um, cast off some stitches then to give the little dip effect or the point effect, and you just keep going and you just keep increasing. And increasing until you either go the desired length of the stitch count in the pattern or else she I just kept going to I got to the the end as I say brilliant way to use up every last every last wee inch so there it is the the wool was so drapey and I mean it just blocked you could you could just make it block to any, sh any shape you wanted. Um, I was so impressed with how the, the pico sort of finished. I think there's maybe a wee thread there needs cut. Um, you know how they, I've never blocked anything that has stayed in shape so much like it. It's a lovely, easy to wear shawl. So that is the close to you shawl by Justina. And it is one, I don't often knit a pattern the second time. Um, you sort of get knit it, finish it and put the pattern away and that's it. But this one here, I could have cast another one on straight away and it wouldn't have bothered me at all. Um, would make a brilliant quirk gift. I knit it in a few days, um, but I have been doing maybe a wee bit more knitting. But uh, definitely would be a go-to and something to try. It's only a few yarn overs. It's a very simple pattern and it's just enough interest to sort of keep you going. It's not, it's not boring and you sort of think with so much garter stitch gush it would be, but it's not. Um, it's really, really nice stitch gush it would be, but it's not. Um, it's really, really nice and I, I love the colours and it's perfect just for coming into this time of the time of the year it's actually even nice with the top that I have on so yeah very impressed and love the wool um love the mix and it would be really nice to actually purchase some so we'll see what 
shipping and things I, I'm sure everybody every country is the same the whole um, sort of Brexit situation in fact and the EU countries and things it's, it's just left it extremely difficult and shipping is so expensive at the moment so um, I haven't looked into it but yeah a beautiful yarn go check out um, Inspired Fibre Works if you're in a position for wanting some yarn and even go across to Instagram give them a like and give them some encouragement for the lovely work that they do so yeah I think that's probably probably enough rambling about the, the shawl isn't it have you finished fed up listening to me yet I'm fed up hearing my own voice but Gizmo's still napping so we'll keep going when we can okay then the final finished object yeah this is the final finished object and it is part of the set that I was knitting that you would have heard about lots before and it was the Betweenity set by iRock Knits it was for a hat, a cowl and mittens and I have the, the cowl finish that you'd have seen in some of the other um, episodes and I finished the hat again it's not blocked because um, I want to find a way to block to block properly um, and I think balloons seem to be the the common consensus so um, this is the hat again the ends aren't finished is it a finished object with ends you tell me so the yarns I used for this then um, as I chatted about before were West uh, West Yorkshire spinners for the colour work. This is the amber colourway and the Zycron. Um, it is a 100% Wensley deal composition. Um, lovely to knit with and perfect for perfect for colour work. And then the main colour which you can see has a lovely pink tinge off it. I think the camera's picking it up. Yeah. It's called Cinder Glow and it is by John Arban Textiles. It's their John Arban Devona or Devonia. 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 Um, and it is 50% Xmore, 30% Blueface Leicester, and 20% other wool so it's really nice that's the color work I'm pretty pleased with it and um, it'll look much better when it's look much better when it's blocked so I'm not knitting the mittens because I know my daughter I know she'll not doesn't wear won't wear mittens so there's no there's no point in with two small children I mean you just you don't get a I don't think you get a chance to wear mittens so um I'm gonna leave it at the cowl and the the hat and I'll put some photographs in of the two together and it makes a really nice makes a really nice set so that'll be that'll be a nice um part of a Christmas present for my daughter. I still have quite a bit of the wool left. That is the The camera's actually quite quite good. Yeah. And then there's a crop. It's more pink than it's maybe showing up there. But um I have enough left to to do something with, so um I might even have enough to actually knit a small cowl, but I think it would be a bit a bit itchy just for children and um, though it does it does settle when it's washed but um, I don't think it would be the I don't think it would be the best so that is the Betweenity hat so that is all the latest um, finished objects there was other bits and pieces that have been gifted away or I maybe had talked about and have put away or put away and forgot to, to keep them for the podcast I'm not sure but anyway that's the that's the current finished objects 
Okay, so how has everybody been? I've told you how I've been. You can tell me how you're getting on. I hope you've all enjoyed your your summer. I hope that um, COVID restrictions are settling down where you are and you're beginning to enjoy a little bit of normality again. Um, it's nice, but normality is stressful. Uh, just getting used to being out and about again and getting used to people um, having conversations without talking to your phone <laughs> and being on a Zoom meeting. So it's strange getting out and meeting again, but I hope everybody's keeping safe and that you're finding normality too. Okay, Gizmo is still sleeping. So I am going to show you the two works in progress that I have at the moment. And then I want to talk to you about something else. Okay, then the first um, item that I have on the needles is the Deer Sweater by Tanya Barley. I seen this first knit last year on Kate from Hawthorne Cottage Crafts podcast. And um, it, was, it was lovely and it was something I had on my wish list then to knit. So it is a top down construction some colour work at the top um, you can see the reindeers and their wee noses not sure if I've done their noses terribly terribly well but they've got them and uh, so Rudolph needs a red nose doesn't he so um, as I say top down construction I have the top finished and have that much done for the bottom I measured it briefly last night and I think maybe another inch and I will start for the ribbon um, I'm going to um, add a couple of short rows just into the back to uh, give it a slight curve and a wee bit longer just at the back and I'm going to do a split hem um, I could be polite and say I want a split hem for um, just something different but I want a split hem to make sure that it'll go down over my bottom um, lockdown pounds we'll say they're there before lockdown but sure we'll blame lockdown for everything and um, so you can see the some of the floats on the inside there um, I didn't want to I wanted this to be sort of an economical knit because I thought we're at November December maybe a few days in January and that will be it away again. So um, Lovecrafts here in the UK always do fantastic sales. And if you sign up for their email, their first order is 15% off. And then they do flash sales all the time. So um, I seen this yarn. Where did I leave the back? It is a Willow and Lark portrait. And the colours I chose were red rose and cream. That is the label. It is a fine merino camel hair and acrylic microfiber mix. It is actually a yeah, 60 wool, 10 camel hair and 30 um, acrylic microfiber. It's 50 grams. 115 meters absolutely divine it's an italian it says italian absolutely divine to knit with beautiful um so soft um really 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 nice that's pretty true to yeah pretty true to color there really really nice um and i think when I bought the cream and the the red here, um, it cost me forty five pounds. Um, I know you can buy a jumper at six or seven, but um, I thought it was a really good quality wool, and um, you know that's reasonable enough. I was happy and happy enough with that. Um, I am going to put a longer rib on the cuff, and maybe not just do as many decreases because I fancy sort of having the the longer cuff and. A wee bit of bloom maybe at the bottom of it that's the idea i just fancy doing a few modifications to be honest so that when i come back on i can say i modified 
Ah, uh, mad as hatters. So anyway, that's the deer sweater. By Tanya Barley. It's a really good fit actually. I measured and rather I'm inclined to go on the bigger side always and rather than doing that I just stuck true to fit um with the ease that I wanted and it is it's a good good comfy fit and I'm really looking forward to getting it to getting it finished. So that is the deer sweater. Excuse me, I'm now onto the floor for project bags. What's next? Okay, the next thing then I have are the apple muffin socks again. I knit these before and I raved about the pattern and I wanted to knit them, knit them again. So this time of the year, everybody that you know um, that's knitting probably follows a Strictly Come Dancing and does the Strictly Knit Along with Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful. It isn't a program I watch. Um, I don't have any, wouldn't have great interest in the dancing um, or that, just that program. So um, I wasn't taking part. Then um, Susie from Elder Flower Stitches, um, who actually, she was the, the designated dyer this year for the yarn for the Strictly Knit Along, um, had up on Instagram that she was doing a Great British a baker bake off knit along. And yes, I'll watch it. Um Andrew doesn't mind watching the great the Great British Bake Off. So um I decided I would take part in it and it's been on now for two weeks. There's a catch up and um there's an extra programme as well. So um these are the socks. I have the first one complete. I think I watched, I've watched the first and second one and I watched a bit of catch up and completed the first sock. And I need to get a sock blocker, don't I? Okay, very unprofessional to share. It is what it is. Okay, that's a better job. As you can see, it's a bit longer again. A real simple pattern, a few rows, and uh, it's great. I love it. It gives a nice sort of chunky texture, and um, it's just a really nice fitting. It feels a comfy pattern on your foot. Um, did the couple of rows at the top in the contrast color. Heel flap and gusset did the eye of cartridge on the heel. Just a little bit of contrast on the heel turn and then the toe. The yarn then, um, if you remember back in January, I had subscribed and purchased some of the sock club um, from Ellie of Craft House Magic. Um, she was doing a club from January to September and this is one of her colorways it's called can't remember which month and um, the goonies are good enough it was all film related um theme music and this time it has the stelina in it is it picking up uh, maybe a wee sparkle there can you see slight sparkle um, and it is 75-20% uh, superwash merino and the 5% stellina. It was 100 grams for 400 meters and then 20 grams at 80 meters. I love Ellie's wool. Ellie's actually off now on maternity leave so she's not um, dying anything more at the minute but in her shop you'll get all her um, Hiya Hiya accessories, some clover accessories and you'll also get um, I think she's some yarns maybe up just whatever she had dyed so I haven't looked if there's much at the moment or not but I think she'll be back she said hopefully back dying again um, in January. 
So that is my bake along socks and the, the apple muffin pattern. So that is the only two projects that are on the needles, um, apart from my sieve pullover and I will be going back to it as soon as I finish this um, deer sweater because I want to um, have it finished to wear in the winter time. Okay, that is everything. There's something I want to share with you though. And it is, I'm just getting, getting out the yarns. And where did I leave them? If you can see here, they're hanging up. These are a pair of socks I have knit. Um, coming up to Christmas, um, there's always the Christmas Eve cast on, which is brilliant. And I enjoy casting something on on Christmas Eve. But there's always so many advents as well. And while I don't purchase an advent calendar because I'm not into using, into using minis, um, I thought it would be nice to have a advent pattern. Um, not in particular to go with minis, but for people that maybe don't buy advent calendars that could be knit through the month of December. And when it would come to Christmas Eve, you would have a finished object that you could wear and you would be ready then for your Christmas Eve cast on. And I fancied the idea, I'm always dibbling and dabbling and adding one pattern to another, etc. And um, Christmas trees, um, for me is the center of the Christmas decorations and it's just the, the it's just the center of center of Christmas and sometimes in the evening times when gosh when it's busy and you sit down I just love sitting down beside the Christmas tree and just the twinkling lights and it's just peaceful and calm and so I put together this pattern and um, it has a tiny Christmas tree going round the top of it. The rest of it is a plain, just a plain vanilla sock. Um, I did the eye of partridge heel and I put a little bit of colour underneath. The idea being that the beginning of December sometimes doesn't just be as busy. So by the time you get the first week or 10 days of December over, you'll have your colour work done and then it's just a matter of knitting a row or two here or there throughout the month of December and finishing off your sock. So I hope to put this into a pattern. Please leave a comment if you think that's a good idea. I'm working on it at the moment um, and hopefully it will come to fruition and will be ready for December. I haven't particularly decided on a name yet but um, it would be brilliant beginner colour work for, I mean, it's just a few, few rows, 16 rows or something like that. It's not complicated. Um, the yarn that that is knit in is from, again, from Susie from Elderflower Stitches. Um, it's called Buttercup Ombre. It's in her super sock. which is four ply, 100 grams, 75, 25, and there's 425 grams, so it's a wee bit finer. And then the green that I used was just a cut um, from one of the sock clubs, and the brown was a few inches for each tree um, from Stash. So please do let me know what you think. Um, would it be something you would buy? Um, it would be nice to do as a knit along um, for the podcast group um, for chat on Ravelry um, and chat on Instagram um, we could have a prize for it um, it just would be a matter of purchasing the, the pattern and, and knitting it's not going to be a kit or anything you can do it if you're of your choice and um, I mean there's possibilities of sort of doing band here and stripes underneath etc I mean um, that's just the basis of the, the Christmas tree so um, yeah leave a comment let me know what you think 
and if it's something that you would be interested in or that you think other people would be interested in that you think is a good idea and we can see how it goes so that uh, is a design in the works who knows it may be a design someday so then um future knits then really um is all i have all i have left and one of the things that i would like to knit i'm going to put a photograph of it in um because i'm not printing patterns anymore and it is called the lava flow coil i've had it in my ravelry list for quite a while and um with the dog walking now early in the morning late in the evening and a time in between um a coil would be a great idea um, it's a dk coil it uses approximately 300 yards um, you'll see the photograph of it up here and it has a slight twist in it um, basic dk so it's not going to be an expensive knit for um, just roughing roughing the weather and um, so that i might cast on pretty soon um, i don't plan to put any more sweaters on i don't think this side of this side of christmas um, I think I'm just going to keep it to the smaller smaller items. So that is one thing. The second thing then that um, I am definitely going to knit, and that is um, the photograph here, the jilted Santa hat and beanie um, by Carrie for, from Con Curious Conundrums. It is knit in Malibri Go Worsted and... Um, the Santa hat has been requested and I've also had two beanies requested so I probably need to get them on and get them get them started that um, the folk can get wear out of them before coming up to Christmas. Um, it's not terribly Christmas, well the Santa hat obviously the shape of it makes it quite Christmas but in the beanie um, you could knit it in all colours and it wouldn't be too Christmassy so that is... The couple of things that um really i have on the cards i don't want to put anything more onto a list um put myself under all the pressure and then get nothing done so there's three beanies there is the and the lava coil that's hopefully it and maybe something for myself something else for myself in between times who knows i'm sure there'll be more socks and they'll obviously have to be and then socks yeah, so that is, I think that is basically, basically it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I just want to finish with a, a little thought um, that I've had. And if that's not for you, I totally understand. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I look forward to your comments down below. And um, see you again next time. Hopefully it won't be just as long. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you've decided to, to stay with me, and I hope you have, um, I just wanted to share with you um, something that really spoke to me and has got me back on track. And it also took me off track. <laughs> and it is the word strength. And probably, as I did say earlier, part of some of the reasons why I haven't been on social media as much and on this YouTube um, was down to some life struggles and we all have them big small indifferent illness covid financial whatever there's loads and loads of um things that we can call struggles um health as well um but for me um i suppose my struggles were um I've lost Lola, Lola, our little dog, which was a big, big thing for me. And if anybody's pet owners, they, they understand. And um, even struggling to learn to live with Gizmo, being a pup and sort of the way he came into life and sort of you feel as though almost replacing Gizmo um, has been a struggle as, um, as well. And just general family, just general family life and illnesses and things that pop up um, into the mix. Um, probably uncertainties that you just never would have thought even at Christmas last year even a month ago you never would have thought would happen but they are um, inevitable but are they defeat um, was the question that I was faced with and you have two options 
um, struggles can break us or struggles can build us and for a little while um, I let struggles break me um, and I sort of forgot where my strength comes from um, and started to ponder through Instagram, ponder through Etsy, um, watch TV, um, all the things that I could use as an excuse to take me away from where I knew um, I needed to be and I knew that needed to be in prayer and in God's word and I got sidetracked from that. And maybe that has happened to you too. Maybe you're a Christian and you know you have got sidetracked as well. Um, or maybe you don't even know um, where true unwavering strength comes from um, if you're not a Christian or if you haven't heard the gospel message. So I just want to leave you with two quick thoughts. Um, one is that character is stronger than circumstances. Um, we can't control why things happen to us. We can't control situations that we're in, but each one of us can control our response. When I chose to stop complaining and I chose to stop having pity parties and realised that I needed to put my full commitment and full time into my faith um, and I knew that I needed to give God thanks for his goodness and his support and his unwavering love. Um, the difficulties and the struggles, they've become a wee bit more bearable. But it has to be a daily decision and I have to approach each day with a positive attitude and a greatless, grateful heart regardless of what the struggles are. The second wee point um, or thought was that struggles lead to strength and that only can happen if you have Jesus Christ as your personal saviour I'm talking about. Um, every difficulty, big or small, um, God will use um, to produce more strength, more faith and more perseverance in each one of us if we let him. And I knew that, but I decided to sort of ignore it. And um, because I was going through difficult things, um, I just thought, well, God, you've let me do this, so, so be it. Um, but he has used those when I have turned to him and fully relied on him to produce more strength to build and encourage my faith and um, I firmly believe that our pain, be it whatever type of pain, physical, mental, emotional, financial, um, general life brings pains and um, can have a purpose and I just, there was one verse just that has really stuck to me. I've memorized it and I keep keep it in my mind constantly. And it's found in Romans in the New Testament in chapter eight and verse 28. And it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who have been called according to his purpose. And um, I just need to cling on to the fact that everything is done in God's, in God's will, in God's strength and that the struggles that I face can lead to strength to get through them and lead to further um, strengthen my relationship with Christ. And the first point was that character is always stronger than circumstances if we let it. Um, and I hope that my character is growing and getting a little bit stronger day by day when I allow God to make the difference. I hope maybe the word strength and um, this wee message has brought some encouragement to you if you're struggling and it has brought a challenge um, to folk that are maybe listening that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus and it is my prayer and Andrew's prayer that um, you would come to know him as your personal saviour and that you too could have the strength in having a personal relationship with God. I am going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is by no means terribly well put together, but Gizmo's waking in from his nap and I need to go and sort that out. And hopefully if this podcast makes any sense when I look at it, I will have it uploaded later. God bless.